Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast with the Silvers. Today's going to come out a little bit tardy because we have been up very late last night. So we're, we're trying to pull ourselves together here. All right. Today is part five and the last part of Paul's conversion and baptism. Mm. From Acts 9, 18, he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized. Mm -hmm. That's been our theme, people. That's been our theme. All right. Acts 16 and 16 through 34. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Mm -hmm. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of her gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city mm -hmm. and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither do observe being Romans. And the multitude rose together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they were very dramatic, <laughs> and cast them into prisons, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received much, such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's powerful. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Is, is it literally all that, that's all they have to that's all we have to say to people? Know, it's just getting, getting me that's all we have to say to people is get me messed up. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Hmm. That's pretty awesome. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. That's really good. Notice that when Ananias came into that house, he called the one-time enemy of the gospel, Brother Saul. Right. Acts 9.17 he recognized that in those three days, a blessed work had been accomplished and that Saul had been brought into relationship with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Was this not enough? No, there was something further. And for this purpose, the Lord has sent Ananias to that house to put his hands upon his newly saved brother so that Saul might receive his sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. You say, but it does not say that he spoke in tongues. We know that Paul did speak in tongues, that he spoke in tongues more than all the Corinthians. <laughs> First Corinthians fourteen eighteen. In those early days, it was so soon after the time of that first Pentecostal outpouring that they would never have been satisfied with anyone receiving the baptism unless he received it according to the original pattern given on the day of Pentecost. When Peter was relating what had taken place in the house of Cornelius at Caesarea, he said, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. 
Acts 11.15. Later, speaking of this incident, he said, God, who knows the heart, um, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Acts 15, 8 and 9. We know from the account of what took place at Cornelius' household that when the Holy Spirit fell, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Acts 10, 46. Many people think that God makes a distinction between us and those who lived at the beginning of the church, but they have no scripture for this. When anyone receives the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will assuredly be no difference between his experience today and what was given on the day of Pentecost. And I cannot believe that when Saul was finished with the Holy Spirit, the Lord made any difference in the experience that he gave him than the experience that he had given to Peter and the rest a short while before. And so Saul was filled with the Holy Spirit and in the later chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, we see the result of this infilling. Oh, what a difference it makes. The grace of God that was given to the persecuting Saul is available for you. The same infilling of the Holy Spirit that he received is likewise available. Move on to a life of continuous receiving of more and more of the blessed Spirit of God. Mm. Good word. Thought for today, do not rest satisfied with any lesser experience than the baptism that the disciples received on the day of Pentecost. We are so blessed. <laughs> we are to have these understandings from a spirit-filled man we are. that feeds us <laughs> greater understanding of the word. Holy Spirit, thank you, Father. Amen. See you See tomorrow. You tomorrow.